Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number eight of the series where I'm learning how to use that CNC machine right over there. It's a Shark HD 510 and I've never used a CNC machine before in my life and I've never used the software that controls the CNC machine before in my life. Um, ever since I started building guitars, my goal has been to build the most precise uh, the most accurate, the most beautiful instruments I could possibly build, and I'm constantly pursuing that. I'm looking for better ways of doing things. I'm looking for the machinery that's going to help me do a better job, and I'm looking. I'm, I'm gaining in my skills all the time in becoming a more precise woodworker. So I believe the next step in that progression is the CNC machine. I believe with the CNC machine I could be more precise, more accurate. And once I have all the tool paths and the design of, a, let's say, a neck figured out, uh, once I've got that all in and I've got it all saved on a little USB drive like this one right here, it could be totally repeatable and I should get exactly the same results every time. So as part of the process of me learning how to uh, design a guitar on a computer, I used Adobe Illustrator and then Vetric VCarve to, to write the tool paths for this stuff. I have been making myself test pieces and patterns as I've moved along. And this is, for instance, the first uh, neck pattern I did of this. This I just basically cut out a flat, see there's no uh, angled headstock on it yet. I just cut out the flat neck. I wanted to make sure the uh, neck pocket fit the neck base here. I wanted to make sure I liked the design of the, of the headstock. I wanted to make sure the, the tuner holes were lined up. I wanted to make sure I had the right length. So I basically made myself a flat. Um, a flat pattern or template or a test piece to go by. So after I did that, of course, this is the whole time I'm working on the guitar as I'm doing this. When I got to the next stage and I was getting ready to do the neck, I needed to figure out how to do it where I can make it on an angled headstock on the CNC machine, which if you watched the video from last week, you'll see how I did that. And I'll post it up there uh, to let you, let you take a look at that. So on this one, not only did I figure out how to uh, go from a flat cut to the angled headstock and cut that out all, all out on the CNC machine. I also went ahead and cut in my truss rod. I cut in my little truss rod access point here with the access hole in the middle and a little medallion, a couple little magnet holes in there. I had realigned the uh, tuners from the previous uh, pattern I made and also made the headstock a little bit longer to fit my Ewar logo in there a little bit better. So this was the next progression of the design. And when I did this one now, I found a couple other little things that needed to be tweaked. I wanted to adjust the, uh, the hole I had for the, the truss rod. Um, I needed to adjust my magnet sizes. And then so I've done all that now too. So it's been a constant refining of the G code or the tool paths that I've been writing to get this neck to where I'm happy with everything on it and I could save all of that uh, G code onto one little USB drive right here. And this one here I've labeled neck number one. So now that I've worked out those couple of uh, items that I wanted to tweak on this one, I'm ready to go ahead and cut yet another one of these patterns. And hopefully this will be the last one. Uh, so I've made those changes to the G code for the truss rod and all that kind of stuff. I've also written a couple other tool paths. One of them is gonna be to surface, do a final surface on the fingerboard face of the neck and to do a surfacing tool path also on the headstock. Oh, and, and also now you can see on here, I actually have this piece glued on here which is gonna represent a neck headstock plate. And what I want my surfacing path to do as it's surfacing this uh, neck, I want it to also cut the line here right on the edge of the angle where my nut's gonna fit up against the headstock plate too. So. Uh, I figured doing all that on the CNC machine together is going to make it everything in the neck in alignment with everything else on the neck. And that is my goal. And so uh, this guy here is now ready to go. Um, I have it all set up and I'm going to run this with all my new G code that I've written. And once I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to hang on to this and it's going to be my neck number one, just like this guy. This is going to be my neck number one reference. So when I go to make this neck again, I not only have the G code saved on a single USB drive, I'm gonna have this uh, neck pattern that I've cut out and I've saved and I could always go back and check and just use it as a reference uh, for me building another neck. So once I'm satisfied with that, 
I'm going to take this actual neck blank that we have that we've been working on too throughout this whole uh, series and I'm going to be ready to cut this because I really don't want to cut this until I've made sure that everything was worked out properly on the cheap MDF stuff and not this expensive stuff that I spent a lot of time on. Anyway, so uh, I think what I'm going to do now is get my, uh, get my pattern lined up on there and we're going to start cutting away and see how this goes. Okay, so the first operation we're going to do on this neck is I'm going to run a surfacing tool path on the fingerboard face of the neck, which is also going to cut my headstock plate, hopefully exactly in line with the, uh, with the uh, break angle on the headstock. So uh, this, is, this is all done in tile tool path number one. So what I have to do, here's the beginning of tile tool path number one. What I have to do now is line that up on my XY0, which I just set to that spot right there. Okay, we're gonna line that up, run tool uh, tile tool path number one, and cut out the, uh, the net. we're gonna surface it, and then we're gonna cut out the uh, profile of the neck, and we're gonna cut out the two uh, truss rod holes, the long one and the little short one up on the end. And then I'm gonna have to slide this all the way down, put my jig on there, and here is my break off point of tile tool path number one and tile tool path number two. So I'm going to have to slide it down here then, get uh, tile tool path number two lined up on my XY zero, which is right here. And theoretically at that point I should be able to hit the button and it will proceed to cut out the tool pass for the headstock. So that's what we're going to do and I, I'm using this fence here for now. I've got this locked into place exactly two inches off of my center line and my bottom board here is exactly four inches wide. I'm going to always have a four inch base to use on when cutting out a neck because my necks are not always exactly the same width, my neck blanks. So I figured I'm going to use this uh, base that I could reuse over and over again which is really part of the whole jig system between the fence the angled portion of the jig and then this base is all going to help me do this. So I'm going to use that to at first I'm going to line this up. I'm going to use the double-sided sticky tape or the glue trick uh, to hold the neck down. I'm going to get my fence out of the way, run the surfacing tool path. Then before I move the neck, I'm going to put the fence back, lock it back down so I know I kept the same offset with my neck. And then I'm going to be able to slide the neck along the fence and get it set up onto the second uh, tile tool path. So, probably didn't make any sense whatsoever. Maybe it'll make some sense as I'm going along here and you're watching me do it. So that fence I have there is critical to this little jig system I'm coming up with. Uh, that's going to help me maintain a perfect center line when I move that neck from tool path number one, tile number one, to tile tool path number two. Because if you don't keep the center line right on these things, it ain't going to be right. I, I could just remove the fence out of the way um, to do my uh, cutting on this particular operation and then I'll just put it back before I move the neck again. And if you look closely at my spoil board you'll see I have a grid pattern laid out in two inches by two inch grid across the whole thing and I etched that grid pattern in with the uh, with the CNC machine itself so I know all the lines on that spoil board are in perfect alignment with the travel of that gantry. So once I surfaced it all off and cut that head plate with the first uh, process, I set up to do the next two, which are the truss rod. One is about a 17 and a quarter inch long slot, quarter inch wide. And then the second one is the wider point at the end that uh, where the nut of the truss rod goes. Now I'm setting up to do my uh, profile cut, which is the outside cut of the neck. And you can see here where it just passes the, uh, the nut location, which is exactly what I was looking for. Now I'm going to clean it up really good, get all the dust out of there, re replace my fence and get it right back in exactly where it was before before I pull that neck off of there. Uh, 
Okay, so I think that's looking uh, good so far. Got my nice truss rod slot, both the uh, long narrow part and the end up here where the, uh, where the nut goes on the thing. And also have my uh, profile cut out all the way up here just past the nut, which is what I was hoping for. And uh, so now the next thing we have to do, see this was our, our XY0 for the first tiled tool path. And this is going to be our XY0 for the uh, tile tool path number two. So now I've got to get my jig on here, get this aligned up so the CNC machine knows exactly where to start and stop. And uh, I'm hoping for the best. So I'm really pleased with how well the uh, neck angle lines up with my jig. Uh, I made the jig in that last, uh, last week's video and I'll go ahead and put a link up there uh, so you can see how I did it if you're interested in that. But anyway, I'm just getting the, uh, the uh, neck um, locked down on top of the jig. Now I need to slide it back and forth and locate it to where my tile tool path number two is going to start. And to do that, I'm using the 30 degree angle V bit, which is a very pointy uh, pencil point bit. And I could get a very precise alignment uh, using that bit. And since the bit was already in there, and that's what I used to cut my logo, I'm going to go ahead and cut the logo first. So once the logo was cut, I went ahead and I put a quarter inch uh, down cut spiral bit and I'm cutting my tuner holes. I kept the, uh, I kept the dust shield off, the dust boot off of this um, so I could watch it go in case there was any kind of a glitch or a hang up, I could see it as it's happening. But uh, normally with that dust boot on there, it'll suck all the dust out. So that's my little truss rod access hole and the medallion cover. Now I'm going to cut out the outside. Really went very well. This little jig setup I have uh, works really well. And I can see right here at my uh, line in between tile tool path one and two, I have a nice alignment, so I am pretty pleased. So now it's time to actually put that neck down there and actually cut on the neck. So I'm starting with the uh, surfacing bit, which is also going to cut the uh, cut the headstock plate nice and straight. And then I went through and I did the uh, did the truss rod slot. Now I'm cutting the profile which is where I came across a problem a rookie mistake you might say I noticed right here I was getting a little burning from the collet on top of that neck and I thought well I could clean that up later but what I didn't think about at that moment was the fact that my headstock plate is sitting up higher than the surface of the neck and I mean that collet just burned right into that headstock. Boy, I was mad. Oh my goodness. That was an awful lot of work that went into that thing. Well, I proceeded on and I finished the rest of the neck. Anyway, since I was uh, already into it while I'm trying to come up with some kind of a solution to fix it. And other than that, everything came out really well. Except for those two big whopping holes in the thing. So you see there my tuners and my truss rod access and little magnet holes and the medallion recess. It all came out good. And so did the uh, profile cutout too. Well, let me go ahead and give you a little quick recap what's on my mind right now, now that I've just pulled this off of the CNC machine. Uh, so, obviously you saw what went wrong. 
at least I hope I explained it uh, or I mentioned something about it as it was happening. But let me tell you what I did. So this, uh, this neck thickness, we're about an inch and a half right now. And in cutting this, I didn't take into consideration how much bit was hanging down past the collet. So what happened was it got down and started that last pass in there and the collet was rubbing on the top of the neck. And I, at first I stopped it, which is where you could see this right here, I stopped it. And then I thought about it, I said, you know, I could run a surfacing thing across here and clean that up. And so I guess it'll be okay. So I started it back again. But what I wasn't thinking about was my headstock plate, which is sticking up higher than the, uh, the surface of the neck itself. And so when that collet got in there, it really bore down into these two spots right here, which is really disappointing. Um, but uh, I'm going to turn that into a feature and I'm going to keep this guitar anyway, since this will be my first CNC made guitar. So I'm going to keep it so, you know, it's part of the learning process. But I promise you, I will not soon forget the setting the depth of the bit or the, the exposed amount of the bit anytime soon. All right, so it is the next day and uh, I've done a little tinkering with this thing this morning. I went ahead and cleaned up the truss rod slot. I squared up the ends and uh, made sure the fit was good and the truss rod fits beautifully in there. I drilled a little hole in here through the end where I can get to the end of the truss rod with my Allen wrench. And I messed with these two guys right here. This is where it got burned from the collet on the spindle. And uh, though I was very disappointed in that, I went ahead and took my chisel this morning and I kind of cleaned up the burn marks a little bit. And then I sanded it down to expose the uh, veneers I have laying underneath this headstock cap. So though it's not ideal, uh, I'm not going to try to sell this guitar or anything. I'm going to keep this as my first CNC machine guitar. And that is going to be a reminder to me to uh, never do that stupid thing again where I leave the bit not hanging out long enough out of the collet. Anyway, so there's one last thing I want to do on this, and that's I need to resurface this top again a couple of times because it burned really bad right here too in this spot right here. And I don't want to see that under my fingerboard later, and I don't want to try to fill that or anything. So I have the surfacing path that I did the very first operation I did on this neck, which not only did a final surface on the face of the, the neck, it also cut the headstock plate at the line where my nut's going to come in contact with it. So I wanted to do that to kind of eliminate this, surface it off a couple more times. But my deal was I was concerned about getting it in precise alignment on the machine to where this cut will stay the same. Well, luckily, I still have the base plate that I had the neck attached to from uh, yesterday when I did it. And you could see it, it had cut deeper, it cut a slot, the CNC machine cut a bit of a slot into this base plate, which allowed me to precisely line this neck up on this base plate exactly like it was uh, yesterday. So I should be able to line this back on the CNC machine just like I started it before, set up and run my, my surfacing tool path, and it should be able to surface this down. It only takes a thousandth of an inch at a time, so I'd run it a couple of times to get down to where that, uh, that burn mark is gone and hopefully it should hit right on this uh, nut line here really nice too. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do, and that'll be it for this week on this video. Um, I appreciate you all watching. I hope somebody learned something from it, especially that, uh, that deal about keeping your bit sticking out far enough. I'll certainly learn that one on this. I appreciate you sticking around and checking it out. I hope somebody got a little something out of it. Anyway, God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.